welcome back. And that's where we're going to Edo State. What's happening there in the next few weeks or so, we would have an election in Edo State. And a lot of people who are seeking to occupy that number one seat, and as they all are claiming, are going to be able to birth the Edo State, the people of that state will love and will want to be a part of. But today we're, we're having a conversation with one of those who are seeking that number one seat. The governorship candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, Mr. Azeme Azena. He joins us virtually. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Azena. Uh, thank you. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you too. So what's been like for you? It's a few weeks to go and the race appears to be heating up. That's been a, a very good moment. Um, by the grace of God, preparations are going higher every day. By the grace of God, we are going through a moment I call, uh, I, I'll call it the finishing moment, because we are putting finishing touch or touches in all our campaigns and uh, all our structures, all our, uh, let me see, every angle that the election is required to be uh, to be seen, the perspective, the angle, uh, what the people want to know, what the people want to hear, what the people want to see. We are trying to go to the grassroots from the local government to the wards, to the units, to let them know that it's no longer as business as usual, that we are coming out in a full force to give birth to a better Edo state. Mm. So it, no, it has not been easy, but um, the encouragement we are having here is that the people are willing for a change. People are willing to see uh, a new birth of Edo state. People are willing to see a new person occupying the seat of Osadebe Avenue. People are willing to see the transformation of Edo state. So, it has not been easy, but we thank God that everything is going well. The acceptance for NPP is massive. The, the people are yearning. People are calling from left to right. In all the 80 local government and the 192 wars, we get calls every day calling us to come over and perfect our, our structures and our preparation with them. And we have been doing so. We are believing God that everything is going to go well. Mm. You know, it's, it's good that we're able to catch you. You're in your car. That tells us that you're actually headed somewhere, but it's good that we're able to catch you. Um, the INEC, the umpire, has talked about some of the things that are likely to happen. Number one, insisting that there will be no proxy collection of permanent voter cards ahead of the Edoia governorship elections. Now, we know that, based on INEX records, some 119,206 new voters were registered. That's in addition to voters, about 8,000 plus, are transferred from other states to Edo, and about 46,000 who transferred within the state itself. Now, that's adding to the number of voters that you are gunning or hoping will, turn, will come to vote for you to occupy that number one seat. But... You said it that it's not easy, yet you're saying that the people are calling you to come to them. What exactly are you offering the people of Edo State that should make them forget all the others and look to the new Nigeria People's Party? Uh, first and foremost, I am a new bride. I'm a new breed uh, into the Nigeria politics. Uh, the politicians have actually fed the people of Edo State. The technocrats have actually also fed the people of Edo State. And now they are yearning for a new bride, a new breed. And uh, I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for years. And I've been a grassroots man. As a matter of fact, my nickname is Own Boy. So one of the reasons why they are yearning for Dr. Azemi Azena is because he's a man who has lived with them since he was born. I have never uh, lived outside the Doe State. My primary down to all the certificates acquired are done in, or were done in the Doe State. And also, my family live in the Doe State. 
and in my children's school in Edo State. So every other, uh, most of the candidates coming from other parties, they don't live with us, they don't know what we are going through. So the people are wiser, the people are clever now, that you can't come, you can't come for them because of their vote, and after election, you will dump them and leave them. So that is one of the reasons why they are yearning for Patswazeme. I don't have money to offer them like other political parties are doing, but I've offered myself in the past years. Also, I've offered community services not because of election. I've been on ground, attended to their needs, uh, not, even when I was not having in mind the political ambition. I'm one of those persons in those states, one of the few pastors you can tell or you can point out that he has been on the streets, removing people from the streets as rehabilitating them and putting them back to the society so that they can be useful to themselves and to their generation. Uh, in terms of crime, I'm, I'm also, I'll be there. Uh, I think I will say I will be number one because I've gotten several awards, even from the state government, present state government, that uh, Pastor Azeme is one of those supporting the state to reduce crime in the society. Poverty, I have been there to reduce poverty even from the church down to the society. Is it medical uh, outreach? I've been doing it for the past 10 years. Is it restoring light to people's uh, homes? I've been doing that in the past 10 years. It has just been awesome. So this is the reason why, one of the, some of the reasons why they are asking Pastor Zeme to come. But like you said something about the INEC. Uh, I pray that the INEC should do the right thing because some of the hard writing on the wall that I'm seeing now, I don't want to start crying ahead of time because uh, even when we're doing continuous registration, we could see abnormality that took place. How a young party like us to intimidated by other uh, mighty or mighty parties. But so I don't believe that they should do the right thing when it comes to the aspect of INEC. But talking about Pastor Azeme is the own boy. Pastor Azeme is the man of the people. Pastor Azeme is a grassroots man. A Pastor Azeme lives with the people. A Pastor Azeme knows the suffering of the people. As I'm even talking to you now, I am doing my law program in AAU. I can, I can have the money to go to overseas to do it. So because I'm, I, I just felt that everything that I, I, I should do, it should start from my state because charity begins at home. Mm. Pastor Azeme, uh, is it interesting that you brought up uh, this aspect of your of your lifestyle. It does seem like a lot of pastors are coming out for the governorship position in Edo State. Uh, I think it's only the Labour Party that we've not had pastor in front of his name so far. But speaking of your religious beliefs, uh, Primate Ayodele and yourself had a bit of an issue in March. In fact, there's a bounty on your head. He says he will give you a, his media aid, rather. I think his name is Osho, Osho Luatosi, uh, in March. Just so you can give us an update. He said he would give a billion naira to, end, to, to someone, I think it was the head of your party or someone, uh, he said he will give a billion naira if you're able to win the election. How are things with you and Prime Minister Yodele and that media aid and that whole impasse? How is it going right now? I don't have issue with my respected uh, religious leader. He's one of the most respected and I respect him so much and I will never have issue with him. Uh, well, my reply to his, um, his media aid was that if a prophecy was given is not permanent. A prophecy can be changed. Uh, permit me as a religious leader to give you a part of a, a Bible where prophecy was changed. In uh, Isaiah 38, uh, uh, Isaiah was sent to Mickey Uzziah that is going to die. Put your house in order. As he was going, God told Isaiah again, go and meet him that I've had uh, 15 years to his years. So prophecy, many prophecies that came up in the Bible were changed. So what I replied to him, my respected father, is that a prophecy has been given. So it's for him to not join me, to change it. We don't need to beg. We don't need to go into cortes. You don't contest ritual matter. You change what you don't like. So for you to say you will give me one billion if I win, it's like uh, God cannot change his prophecy. Mm -hmm. So God can change his prophecy. So that I will not go into contest with anybody well, just, because just to remind told, us, just remind us of what the prophecy was. He said he, he said I will come out as number four. And I said, okay, since the number one and two and three have not been said, 
That means I still have a privilege to change the situation. Because he didn't tell us number one and two and three. He only made sure that I'm number four. So since these one, two, three are vacant, so I'm taking number one. Mm. All right, let's talk about the next issue that you had, which was in June. Uh, ward members from Mesaco East, uh, they had suspended you for anti-party activities. Just so you can give us an update on how things are uh, with that scenario right now. You did give your response at the time, but where do things stand now? How are, how's the relationship between you uh, as a man coming out for governor under the NMPP and your ward members in Mesaco East? No, no, no. I was never suspended. I'm from one ten, and the uh, the person who had grievances after our primaries was the one who went to court. It was the one that was sponsoring some persons from another ward entirely. I'm from one ten. It's a like East local government. I responded that my ward never suspended me, and uh, the person that was doing that was somebody who who was aggrieved that I defeated him in the primary. Went to court. I look for other areas to actually bring me down. But nevertheless, uh, being a learned person, you should know that a candidate of a, a particular election at a time cannot be suspended. Only three things that the law required for such a person to be removed. I am not a political party holder. I'm not a party chairman that you suspend. I'm a candidate. So the only thing that can remove me from the ballot, either I resign, that is what the electoral has said, or my enemy dies, or I am a sin, or I can do. These are the three things that can remove me from there. So those who were perpetrating suspicion that I'm no longer a candidate is more or less known and void ab issues. So let's talk a bit about your chances. You are up against a lot of heavyweights, many of them pastors as yourself. Uh, one of the conversations we saw online about the governorship election in Edo State is that God has spoken to a lot of people. And a lot of them think that they are going to be in power when the elections happen. So talk to us a bit about your chances. You're up against an incumbent uh, party, not an incumbent candidate, an incumbent party. You're up against uh, the, an opposition, which is the opposition at the federal level. You're also up against the Labour Party, which many people view as uh, the party that is favoured by many young people. What do you think your chances are going to be? Uh, my chances are very high. First and foremost, uh, history will be uh, created again uh, uh, after Adasam, uh, Leo Shumole, one of our persons or one of our uh, illustrious sons that governed those states. He defeated the incumbent um, party and also defeated the federal might. And I think uh, being a religious man and a Christian, Jesus is same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I am the David of our time. All I require to bring down Goliath is a stone. And that stone, I have gotten it already. You go by, by Nigeria political history, you will discover that even in Nigeria, an Ikubet president was removed. So if Ikubet president was removed, that means that might, uh, federal might, state might, and in consequence, where the people of the state of the country made up their mind for a change. And now, and those state people have made up their mind for a change. They are yearning for a change. And being who I am and my party, I just know with God on our side, we are going to bring down the mighty, the mighty to the best minimum that they will never expect that it will be like a dream because it's not either we let according to the Bible but it is God that showed mercy. So we have all of chances of opportunity. And let me quickly say this to you now, that uh, apart from being an own boy, I am a man that uh, people love so much. And I, I don't need to praise myself. People love me so much. Make sure Azemi Azena anywhere, people will tell you it's our man. I may not have the finances to go on big board and go on uh, national televisions, the way all that does. But grassroots is where politics lies. So when you go to the grassroots, you will find Pastor Azeme, Azena, and NMPP in the grassroots. You know, uh, you've called yourself a homeboy. So you're, I'm, I'm sure you're not the only one that has called yourself a homeboy. But um, again, you talked about some of the things you've done for the people and what your plans are for the future, how you would turn around a dose state. 
But considering the economic situation of the country and the limited resources that may be available by the time you get office, you get into office, um, would, do you think you'll be able to turn a dose down? Can you give us specifics in terms of what you're going to do? Um, at what point would you say you've turned around the internal, the revenue generation of the state, um, investor capacity, um, the desire of investors to come into a dual state security, infrastructural development, these are all indices that um, everyone will be looking to change. So let's hear your specifics. What, at what timelines would you be able to do certain things? Okay, I, based on my, uh, my, my written down plan for Edo State for the past years, I want to say in my first 100 days in office, there are many things I'm going to look into and I'm going to change. The first is education. I am in AAU as I'm talking to you now, the uh, state-owned tertiary institution. Uh, if I be a governor even for one day, I'm going to look into AAU and bring it down the school fees of the students and uh, the way it uh, used to be before this administration. And secondly, all the lecturers, the staffs, all their study debt will be paid. And thirdly, the infrastructures, you can't just imagine what we are going through in the classes here. I'm going to renovate them within 100 days in office. And I'm going to be giving the subvention. Subvention is that money that comes to the government, to the school, to run the affair of the school. And that is the reason why this school is having this issue, because this present administration have not been given the subvention. Now, I'm going to ta tackle hunger. I know state is one of the states that if you come now, things are very expensive. And the few reasons why the things are very expensive is because 80% of our Consumable foods come from the north. You talk about the protein, which is the, the meat, uh, cow, goat, uh, maize, uh, bees, rice, green, pepper, anything measure them. They come from the north. And since the roads are bad, the federal roads, and also the increment in diesel, that is why the, uh, those states are suffering from, from that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I will not capitalize on this road below to uh, federal government. I'm going to make sure the road that leak uh, uh, could give state to a low state is motorable to reduce that stress that our people are passing through. And another thing to I mean to make sure there is surplus of food is to encourage our people to go back to farms because presently now, uh, uh, 40 percent of endolite are no longer going to the farm because of insecurity. So when I'm tackling the agriculture, I'm also, also tackle the, the, the farm, I mean, tackle the security uh, of uh, those things. So the kidnappers and the ex men that are living in our forest, I'm going to make sure, but I will partner with the the, the, the the host community of such places and the security agencies to make sure we flush those forests so that people can go back to forest and farm so that we can have food to eat. So as I'm handling agriculture, indirectly, I'll be handling insecurity that is in a dose state. So another thing I'm going to do when it comes to insecurity or in a dose state, because presently now, both are roads that are, uh, they are not safe. I'm going to make sure that we are going to do what we call drop your gun, we take care of you. It's like an amnesty program. I've been doing it for the past 11 years where people come to renounce, drop their gun. You can ask that, you can verify what I'm telling you now. Even when I'm not a governor, I will do that program in every September. People drop guns, I rehabilitate them and put them back to the society while the security agencies come to pick the gun. So I'm going to do it in a bigger way, whereby our youths are going to drop their gun because not all of them enjoy committing crime. Mm. And then we take them, some of them will go back to school, some of them will learn trade, some of them will learn hard work and so on and so forth. That is another way to reduce insecurity in those states. And I'm also going to put something like a whistle blowing. You give us information to any kidnapper or to arrest any arm robber, there's a certain amount to give to you, to motivate you. You see people will like to be uh, involved in such a transaction. So that will lead us to people we cannot naturally reach where we want to get them arrested. So there are many reasons, uh, many uh, principles and um, th uh, theories that I'm going to apply when it comes to insecurity. Medical, 
We are going to do something about medical. Medical is just three things I also put on ground. We are going to employ more doctors. Over 5 million people in those states, we only have 200 doctors from the state level. So that cannot take care of for over 5 million people. So we are going to employ more doctors. All the healthcare centers spread around the 192 wards, we are going to renovate them and put them in order. And the general hospitals in the local government, we are going to work on them. Talk mm -hmm. about economy. The IGR of uh, those states is at about 60, 64 billion era, as we are talking now. Compared to other states like Lagos, Apotecos, that have over 500, which is half a trillion. So we are going to develop a principle that is going to boost up all our IGR, which is internal generating revenue. And the only way we can do that is for our road to go into production. You know, in economy, you talk about production where you want to increase uh, your, 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 uh, your, your money, or you want to increase your profits. So it's not by tax, it's not multiple tax. Mm. So a uh, those state is not producing anything as we are talking now. Gone are the days where we have a those state cement factory owned by the state. Flower, uh, Ewu flower me, owned by the state. Better beauty, owned by the state. Pharmaceutical something, 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 I can't remember the full name in Edo, owned by the state. But today we are producing nothing. So if we must increase our IGR, where money will come, and those states must go back to where we should be producing something, and people will be coming to patronize, and export, I mean, export such a thing out of the state and out of the country. So I'm just going to partner with those in the aspirants for trade and investment. I'm going to create a commission. If I'm sworn into the office, when I'm sworn into the office, one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm going to pass a lot through the House of Assembly, to create a commission or to create an agency for the people in that. Uh, well, it looks like we've lost um, Pastor Azena there. Um, we're hoping we can get him back real quick. Pastor Azena, uh, okay. Uh, you with me? Yeah, we're with you. Well, one second. You, you've, you've, You've reeled out a lot of things that you're going to be able to do in 100 days. It's amazing. I mean, road infrastructure, security, education, IGR. You're talking to increase your IGR, which stands at a uh, little over 62 billion. Uh, you're saying you're going to ex increase that in 100 days. It's amazing the things, your ambition and the things you're planning to do. But when you talk about the challenges, I, I like to focus on that IGR a bit. Um, the issues around in, uh, internally generated revenue in a dual state, some say corruption, the attitude of the revenue collectors themselves points to a mindset. So what are you going to do about mindset reorientation or human capital development? Okay, let me quickly say something here. The, it is true that the IGRO of a those state is where it is today because corruption is involved. Those who are in charge of collecting the money and all that and all that. And that is why maybe you have heard me when I said, I am not going to arrest, maybe you have you have seen that, that the Yahoo boys or what you call internet fraud, they are not going to be arrested by anybody. These persons are going to be the people I am going to work with. Because anybody who have the brain to do somebody, have the brain to collect somebody's money in the account. ICT is what I'm going to build. Every revenue generated from from uh, those states is not going to be done manually again to enter individual pockets. It's going to be done in a form of the way it's done in a modernized world, whereby you do everything, it goes to the government account directly. So I'm going to establish ICT centers whereby these uh, persons who are so talented that are in those states, our youth and teenagers are going to be employed and they are going to work and make sure to survive. Uh, I mean, work in those states and make sure our revenues that we are generating are not entry individual pockets again. Now, uh, like I said when I was talking, apart from the corruption, the major reason why the IGR of those states is also not growing is because the mega companies that ought to contribute their tax to a those state and not be held responsible. It's only the poor man that is selling pure water that they are running after. Because those bourgeois are those who brought the government in power most time to power. And they don't pay their tax. If you if you measure some of the private companies in a those state, assuming they can pay their taxes, we will have a better IGR. But the taxes you are seeing now, 
like uh, 60 something million. They are paid by poor man. They are paid by the person hawking water because these are only the people that they can adjust to pay them. So what I'm going to do, I am going to make sure I will look into the transition law that the bourgeois are going to be responsible. We are going to take from the bourgeois, not only the Talakawas in the, the streets. So all the bourgeois, all the companies in like those states, we do the right thing according to the those state tax law. That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that law works on both the poor, the rich, and it's going to be all inclusive government. So that is what I'm going to do on that aspect. Now, talking about, uh, if I may get you right, when you said, uh, when I, uh, uh, were you talking about the time? If I may get that place right, because it was breaking when you were saying that. Mm. You you said you'll be doing all of this in the first 100 days in office. Most of those things are going to be done in partnership. Like I said, uh, when I have visited like almost over 60 something nations in the world, it's, it's not everything that the government use their money to do. In those states, there are people who have built hospitals, and donated to the federal, uh, the state government. We have more people like that who are ready to invest in a those state healthcare center, invest in a those roads. There is a man in Urumi who has single-handedly repaired road a tire road in the past in a those state. Supposing such a man was encouraged, others will also follow likewise. So I am not going to just use the money in a those state. Uh, the federal allocation, internal generation revenue to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to partner with individuals who are going to come aboard, also help me to handle some of this project. Like, for example, this renovation. My boss, Apostle John C. Suleiman, who I've been working with, he has built a, a computer center for Aouchi Polytechnic, Federal Polytechnic Aouchi, donated a ICT center. So people like that, that come to AAU, for example, and do renovation with partnership with them. And some other, there's a great man calling Samuel Bini, single handedly, you have done some things in those state. But the problem is that some people are not recognized. He said, the power that be are fighting them. So I'm going to partner with both those in, in, the, in the community and those in those states and those outside those states. So that will get it done. Though the, how to get it done is not a problem. I have been in business. Apart from being a pastor, I'm also a businessman. So how it's going to be done is not an, an issue at all. Just leave it for me until we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. Okay. We, we do have to start wrapping up, uh, Pastor, because I know if we let you, you're a pastor, you will talk for hours. You would not be tired <laughs> if, if we let you. I think one of the few things, one of the things that you said uh, that really got to us here and we've been, we've been taking notes since you said it is about this Yahoo Boys uh, matter and how you're going to get people who uh, who have been enjoying dollars uh, from fraudulent activities every day to suddenly drop all of that and join you and be learning ICT and uh, you know have a decent living. I can see you laughing about that. How long do you think that would take? I don't know how you plan because it's a problem. It's a problem in your state, you know, and yeah. and that yeah. reputation uh, is going around yeah. the world along with other reputations that are not very flattering. Uh, human trafficking and yeah and uh, Rome and was not built Rome, Rome was not built in a day Rome was not built in a day I, I have had a conversation with most of those boys not all of them are joined doing it some of them are doing it just because maybe they are influenced to do it some of them are doing it because they are jobless some of them are so I am being with them talking with them so I may not be able to get all of them at once but I'm going to get all the reason why I'm going to make use of this principle Please, if you watch where, where you are taking a certain drug on any image or any sickness, and that thing is sickness is still increasing, it's a sign that the drug you are taking is a wrong drug. We have been arresting these boys. We have been taking them to EFCC, ICT, uh, 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 maybe DSS and all that. You discover that the trade, the business is increasing. That shows that that is not the solution to it. So this methodology that I'm bringing now may be a solution to it. So we are going to try it, that we are going to give them opportunity with the hydrogen dollars. But that dollars is not every day. They can get money today. After six months, they will not get again. So we know how to bring them in. It's orientation. It's an ideology. You have to change their mindset. It's not gone that we change it. It has to be a constant, regular orientation so that they can change the way they think and they become useful to themselves. Because an idle man 
is a devil worship. So I'm going to make use of them and I'm going to make sure that they live well and fulfill their life. They don't enjoy doing that work and they don't enjoy going to police station and every day. Thank Lastly, you. on that matter. Thank you. Lastly, on that matter. Okay. I would have let you know that the people, the money collected from them on Bay doesn't go to the IGRO of the state. So why would they be taking that to station? Another person will right. steal for another Thank person you. to steal. Thank you, Mr. Azeme Azena, who's a pastor and seeking the number one office in Edo State, governorship candidate of the NNPP in the forthcoming Edo elections. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, and we wish you well. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be with you. Thank you. God uh, bless you. God bless you, too. And we do have uh, one or two feedbacks uh, from you, our viewer, we have this one from Pastor Law Alpha C. He says, the security agencies should be concerned about the spate of desperation displayed so far by different political parties ahead of the Goodbye elections. Leadership isn't by force. Uh, Festus Akimboyewa says, well, Professor Odenta, Odenta is a renowned intellectual. We must not forget that he is also a politician. The Obasanjo administration he's referring to did not turn Nigeria into paradise. Uh, oh, well, well, that's where we'll have to draw the curtains on the program today. I want to thank you for letting us be a part of your day. Remember, you do have a role to play in moving this nation to where it ought to be. Every one of us sat from that little corner where you are. At uh, the top of the hour, we'll be taking you to Zamfara State where there's a commissioning of a renovated general hospital um, location is the Kara Namoda local government area in Zampara State. That will be coming up at the top of the hour. Until then, thank you again for letting us be a part of your morning. I'm Neota Ibe. I'm Kayla Magua. Have a great day ahead.